Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out. And in the video today, the truth about the first Academy Awards and the dog Rin Tin Tin. In comparison to the multi-million dollar star-studded display of excess that is the modern-day Academy Awards, the first Academy Awards ceremony was a relatively muted affair that could even be described as quaint if you were so inclined. Held in a medium-sized banquet hall in a Hollywood hotel mostly known for being haunted today – that's the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel – the May of 1929 event wasn't even broadcast to the public in any form. As unbelievable as it may seem, given how massively popular the Academy Awards are today, the the idea of an award ceremony to celebrate various achievements in filmmaking was initially thought to be rather absurd. You see, few in Hollywood believed that any members of the studios within the industry would vote for anything but their own films. As for the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences itself, it was a relatively new organization, in part formed by producer Louis B. Mayer in 1927 with the intent of uniting the various branches of filmmaking as well as to try and curtail these entities from unionizing. When it came to the Academy Awards themselves, he also hoped this would similarly allow him extra direct control over these groups. As he would later state, I found that the best way to handle filmmakers was to hang medals or all over them. If I got them cups and awards, they'd kill to produce what I wanted. That's why the Academy Award was created. Others in the Academy had less nefarious motives, with the hope being that the Academy Awards would lend more prestige and legitimacy to the industry, helping to convince the public to take this relatively new form of entertainment more seriously. So yes, even from the very beginning, the Academy Awards have always been about the individuals working in movies trying to make it seem like they are extremely important. This all brings us around to the story of Rin Tin Tin, a German Shepherd dog that was found in a half-blown-up kennel in France during World War II by an American gunner named Lee Duncan. When Duncan came across the kennel, most of the dogs inside were dead from the bombing of the area, excepting one mother dog and her five pups, two of which he kept for himself, naming them Rin Tin Tin and Nanette, named after little Rin Tin Tin and Nanette yarn dolls, often given as good luck charms to soldiers and others fighting to free France. After the war, Duncan brought the two dogs back to the United States with him, with Rin Tin Tin ultimately becoming a huge star in Hollywood, prominently appearing in a whopping 27 films during his career. Indeed, he is pretty much responsible for popularizing the German Shepherd breed in America and playing a large part in keeping the struggling Warner Brothers afloat in the early days. In the year leading up to the first Academy Awards, he also starred in four hit films – Jaws of Steel, A Dog of the Regiment, Tracked by the Police, and Hills of Kentucky. If you want to see Rin Tin Tin in action, I'm going to link to that below. So, when said award ceremony came around, the story goes that he naturally won Best Actor. But as a huge point of the Academy Awards was to try to make filmmakers and their films seem more important and prestigious, having a dog win one of the top awards didn't sit well with the organizers. So, for that reason, the Best Actor award went to Emil Jannings instead. Or at least this is the story that is oft repeated on the interwebs, even on some of the most otherwise reputable sites. So, now the big question is, is it true? And the simple answer is, well, no. When the first Academy Awards were held in 1929, votes were cast well in advance, and unlike today, they weren't kept a secret at all. As a result, all of the winners and losers that first year knew well ahead of time, as did the public. In fact, the LA Times published the results about three months before the actual ceremony took place. From the fact that these ballots were public, and they still exist in the archives at the Academy's Margaret Herrick Library, we know definitively that Rin Tin Tin didn't even come close to winning Best Actor, receiving only a single mocking vote by Warner Brothers executive Jack Warner. This is contrary to literally every other source that we could find on the matter. The genesis of the rumor that he not only did receive many votes, but also won, can be traced back to a different Warner Brothers executive, Daryl Zanuck. He was one of the many who initially thought the Academy Awards were a stupid idea. The story goes that when he first caught wind of a ceremony celebrating Hollywood, Zanuck wrote a letter to Academy executive Frank Woods that included a faux ballot that only nominated Warner Brothers features and workers to demonstrate what he believed would happen if the idea became reality, that everyone would just vote for their own stuff. 
He then further showed his contempt for the idea by writing Rin Tin Tin's name for Best Actor. Zanuck, who actually became a strong proponent of the awards in later years, evidently told this story one too many times at a cocktail party or two, leading to it becoming enshrined in Hollywood lore and repeated ad nauseum. This in turn resulted in the story ending up in a 2011 book by Susan Orleon, Rin Tin Tin, The Life and the Legends. The news media picked up on this, spreading the legend as fact, and seemingly few bothered to look into it from there on out. The truth is that when official ballots were actually cast, Zanuck didn't even bother voting, joking or not. So sadly, despite arguably being one of the most popular stars in Hollywood, and by all accounts a very, very good boy, Rin Tin Tin was completely snubbed by Hollywood insiders thanks to their blatant and unapologetic speciesism. And so it was that German actor Emil Jannings, who would later go on to make Nazi propaganda films, was honored instead. As for Rin Tin Tin, he remained a good boy and despite being a German shepherd, never appears to have had any Nazi leanings. On top of that, he doesn't appear to have ever discriminated against anyone based on their species, race, or seemingly had any prejudices of any kind, except presumably a deep loathing of mailmen. So I really hope you enjoyed that video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for brand new videos every day of the week. Also, I've got another channel, it's called Biographics. It's biographies of notable people from the present day as well as history. From Elon Musk to Osama Bin Laden, you can check it out through the icon on the screen now. But if you want something else to watch right now, why not check out another Today I Found Out video or a Biographics video over there on the right. And as always, thank you for watching.